Church of Praise and Worship. Our telephone number is 214-403-7563. The email address is ggtchurch66 at yahoo.com. I am so thankful to God for everything that he's done, he's doing, he's going to do. It's a blessing and a privilege to just be able to sit before you and expound on the word of God. We're in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter and the fourth verse. No, the third and fourth chapters, excuse me. Ecclesiastes, the third and the fourth chapters. We're going to tell a little bit about the third chapter. Solomon, having shown the vanity of studies, pleasures, and business, and made it appear that happiness is not to be found in the schools of the learned, nor of the gardens of Epicurus, nor upon the exchange, he proceeds in this chapter further to prove his doctrine and the inference he had drawn from that therefore we should cheerfully content ourselves with and make use of what God has given us by showing one, the mutability of all human affairs and uh, two, the immutability of the divine counsels concerning them and the unsearchableness of those counsels. Three, the vanity of worldly honor and power which are abused for the support for the support of oppression and persecution if men be not governed by fear of God in the use of them. And then we further come down with the A and the B that uh, for a check to proud oppressors and to show them their vanity, he reminds them, number one, that they will be called to account for it in the other world. Number two, that their condition in reference to this world for that which he speaks is no better than that of beasts. And therefore he concludes that it is our wisdom to make use of what power we have for our own comfort and not to oppress others with it. Not to oppress others with it. We'll go to our scripture here. To everything, this is the third chapter, there is a season and a time for every, and, and let me start again. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. And a time to, to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail, this is Solomon, I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. My God. God is awesome. He is awesome. And I, 
I repeat and I will continue to repeat, he is so good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart, and I know I'm repeating this, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. And he goes on to say, I know that there is no good in them for but a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in mine heart, this is Solomon talking, I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in mine heart concerning the state of the sons of men that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts, even one thing befalleth them as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast for all is vanity. All go under one, unto one place. All are of the dust. And all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward. And the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works. For that is his portion, for who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? And I like this scripture even more, the 22nd verse. Wherefore, I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion, for who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? He's saying, I've seen it, I've studied, and I've seen it. I've seen many things, I've learned many things. He said, but he perceives that after all of our work, our labor, our building, everything, our planting, all of that, that we enjoy the fruits of our labor. We don't know what's coming after us. We don't know what's been before us, but to enjoy what we have right now. So, going to the fourth chapter, so I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun, and behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, and they that had no comforter, and on the side of their oppressors, there was power, but they had no comforter. Wherefore, I praised the dead which are already dead more than the living which are yet alive. Yea, better is he than both they which have not yet been, who have not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. Again, I consider to travail in every white work that for this man is envied of his neighbor. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. The fool foldeth his hands together and eateth his own flesh. Better is an handful with quietness than both the hands full with travail and vexation of spirit. 
Then I returned, and I saw vanity under the sun. There is one alone, and there is not a second, yet he hath neither child nor brother. Yet is there no end of all his labor, neither is his eye satisfied with riches, neither saith he, for whom do I labor and bereave my soul of good? This is also vanity, yes, it is a sore travail. Now two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. For out of prison he cometh to reign, whereas also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. I considered all the living which walk under the sun with the second child that shall stand up in his stead. There is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Solomon had studied. He had uh, studied for wisdom. He had tried different things. He wanted to know how it is, how is life. And he came to these conclusions. And this is just talking about he's showing the vanity of studies, pleasures, and business. And he made it to appear that happiness is not to be found in the schools of the learned, nor in the gardens of the Epicures, nor upon the exchange. This is what he concluded. But he also said, that people who have power have pleasure in oppressing the ones that don't. But he said they will be called to account for it in the other world, that their condition in reference to this world, for of that he speaks, talking about this world, is no better than that of beasts. And then he concluded that it is our wisdom to make use of what power we have for our own comfort and not to oppress others with it. And we must remember that. Remember that we're not to oppress others. There's so many people who have power as they say, or think, um, they use that power to make themselves look big in the eyes of others, and their others, and therefore look down on others. And he said, "This, all of this stuff, all of this stuff, is vanity, vanity, and vexation of the spirit, because we all have to answer to God in that great day. All of us have to answer to God." I am so thankful. I'm going to go to chapter 4 here in the uh, Matthew Henry uh, study. Chapter 4. Let's see. I'm going to have to just put it in, I guess. Chapter 4. Okay. Ecclesiastes 4. All right. King James Version. All is vanity and vexation of spirit. You know, I, I, I am so thankful to God, and I try to live my life where I won't look down on others. Why would I have a right to look down on someone else and think that I'm so much better than this one? 
so much better than that one when all of us are the same. We all live and we all die. One way or the other, we're going to either be caught up in the rapture or we're going to die. But it is inevitable. It's going to happen. We have to leave this world. And so that makes us all equal. None is better than the other. So Solomon, having shown the vanity of this world in the temptation which those in power feel to oppress and trample upon their subjects, here further shows, number one, the temptation which the oppressed feel to discontent and impatience to the temptation which those that love their case feel to take their case and neglect business for fear of being envied. Then the third, the folly of hoarding up abundance of worldly wealth. A remedy against that folly in being made sensible of the benefits of society and mutual assistance. The mutability even of royal dignity, for only through the folly of the prince himself, but through the fickleness of the people, let the prince be ever so discreet. It's not the prerogative even of kings themselves to be exempted from the vanity and vexation that attend these things. Let none else then expect it. None of us are immune to life and the vanities and the vexations of life. All of us go the same way. Whether you're rich or you're poor, you're powerful or you're not, everybody goes the same way. We're all made from the dust. We'll return to the dust. And he said, vanity of vanities, all is vexation of spirit. And so he also said, and I, I repeat this, he said, it's good for a man to enjoy the fruits of his labor because it's good to God that we enjoy the fruits of our labor. We work and we put away, we save and everything, and it's not promised to us that we're going to live to see the next second. So what he said, enjoy what you've done, what you've accomplished now, and enjoy it with the restriction that you don't oppress others because of what you have, your status, because we're all equal in the eyes of God. And when you misuse and abuse and oppress someone else, you must answer to the higher power, which is the almighty God. Vanity of vanity. All is vexation of the spirit. So it is God's will that we do his will and live according to his will. And we will see him face to face in peace on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment. This is Greater Gospel Temple, an inspiration of God Ministries, right here on Ustream.com, Ustream.tv, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you're watching is where we are and I love you and I give all praises to God for everything that he's done this is January 14th Sunday January 14th in the year 2018 and I'm thanking God again and thanking each of you for telling me happy birthday and uh, sending me greetings and and uh, messages and videos and everything. I just thank you so much because he blessed me yesterday, January 13th, to live to go into another year here in 2018. And for that, I am grateful. Now remember, out of all that I say and do, I just want to please Jesus.
I just want to please Jesus. And I do try every day of my life to live according to his will. I pray that you will continually be blessed. Be blessed in the name of God.